Hey guys, Barbara here. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Let me show you what I'm right in the middle of making. Onion bagels. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Say hello to my mother. Hi, everybody. She's not shy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I guess Mario Ramirez from... Box 11. <laughs> you are on The Bear Pantry Show <laughs> in Utah. Every Sunday, potato salad, stewed chicken, rice and beans, and plantains. You're watching the Bear Pantry Show. Yeah. Off sales. I love off sales! Watching the Bear Pantry Show. Attack! You're watching the Bear Pantry Show with my sister. <laughs> you may or may not know that I have bagel recipes here at the site already. I have savory ones and I have sweet ones. We're going to do a savory one today, so let's take a look at what we're going to need, guys. So look here. We're gonna need five cups of bread flour. Do not, I repeat, do not use all-purpose flour or self-rising flour. Use bread flour. It's more expensive, but your uh, bagels are gonna come out so perfect, you're gonna thank me, all right? So we want the flour to be divided. Two and a half cups here and two and a half cups here. So don't look at this yet. Let's go over here. So this is two and a half cups of bread flour. It's not sifted. Because it's savory bagel that we're gonna make, this is only one tablespoon of regular white sugar. If you're going to do a sweet bagel, do two tablespoons, all right? This is two, um, two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. So here, this is a teaspoon, and then it's two and a quarter, all right? So if it's those little packets, one of those little packets is a tablespoon. So I think you can get away with using one packet out of the one that comes by three, and you should be okay for this. Two cups, exactly. Did you see this? Let Joe take a look at this with the camera. Two cups exactly of hot water from the faucet. So what I'm going to do is make a starter first because this is how bagels operate. And this is not going to be sourdough starter, okay? Just regular starter. Just add everything in and just toss everything in. Get the back of a, the handle of a wooden spoon, a little spatula like, like this, or maybe even a whisk. And just work this in until it becomes a paste. It's going to be thick, but don't worry, all right? So... Let me just work this in. All right, you guys see how thick this is? This is what you're looking for. Let me clean this off. All I'm gonna do is uh, loosely cover it up with that lid and I'm gonna leave for like an hour to go visit a sick friend in the hospital. I'm gonna rush right back, and then we're gonna be caramelizing these on the stove top, and then kneading up the bagel. See you guys in about an hour. You almost have thought I was kidding when I told you I had to go visit a sick friend, right? See, see the footage next to me? I don't know which side it's gonna appear, where we went to the hospital to visit a friend. And so that took like an hour and a half, and look, our starter is like more than ready for us, so I would say in an hour, it'll be ready. But I gotta take care of the onions. If I didn't leave, I could have taken care of the onions and we would be ready to go. So let's caramelize the onions. See the stove there? The, a little bit of butter in my skillet and let's go. And this is like a whole big onion like this. See? A lot. So we're just going to cook this on low heat until it starts to look like, not burnt, but brown. And it's gonna smell good, all right? It's gonna smell amazing. It's on very low fire, guys, and I just keep doing this so that it doesn't burn. See how these parts are getting brown? The, car the caramelization is happening, and it's smelling pretty good, and it's getting cooked. And this is all it is to making onion bagels. All right, so just let me continue with this. I've been going at this probably a good five or six minutes. So I'll go at this some more. I'll, I'll lower the fire as needed because I don't want it to burn. If only I had smell of vision guys. If only. So this is the two and a half cups of um, bread flour that we had separate. Remember? I'm adding a teaspoon of salt. Don't add too much more salt than that because it's going to be too salty and it's going to um, retard your stuff from rising. Okay? So let's get the onion pieces in there. So this is the same as if we were doing the jalapeno pieces. Just gonna move them around so that each bagel can get a little bit. And I'm gonna put a little bit of onion powder, but not too much, all right? Let me get this open. 
So just let me sprinkle some in. I'm not even going to measure. I think that's about half of a teaspoon. Work this in. And then look at what we do next. I'm going to take the end of my spatula. And this is what we're going to do. Dump the dry into this living thing right here, my starter. Let me get it all. So if you don't have any kind of bread kneading thing, you don't need one. You know how I do it here, right? Everything is about operating on little, not enough. Let's get this worked in and then I'm going to get my hand in it. It didn't take too long to get it to this point. It took about 40 minutes for it to double in size. So let me go ahead and take it from the bowl. And some people will tell you that you have to punch it down. Yeah, you can have fun punching the dough, but you don't have to, all right? As long as you re-knead it for a little bit to get out the air, you're gonna be fine. So just let me go ahead and get my dough cutting tool. I'm having fun with this. I remember a time when I didn't even own something like this, okay? <laughs> now let me go ahead and cut it into eight equal pieces, as equal as I can get. I don't have a scale to weigh these on, but I'm only making it for my family, so I'm just eyeballing. So I'm stealing some dough from the fatter pieces. I just kind of squeeze them to see how they feel. And yes, some bagels are going to be smaller than some, but that's okay. That's okay for you to do that because sometimes maybe a family member just wants to grab a small bagel. Now, I'm salting my water, and I'm showing you this in between because you kind of have to have the water going at the same time that you're doing this part because... Even though the bagel has to rise again, it goes pretty quickly, all right? So the oven is preheating, the water is boiling, and I'm moving as fast as I can to get these eight bagels on the way. So I'm using my rolling pin to just flatten it a little bit. We don't want it to go as flat as a tortilla. And then I'm using my cookie cutter, and remember we want to use kind of like a bigger one so we can get a big hole because if we use the small one that we think would be the right one, then the hole is going to close in on us when we bake the bagel. So see, you, you guys see how I'm doing it, right? Smooth off the top, you know, pinch it on the bottom, roll it with the rolling pin, and then grab the cookie cutter, puncture the hole, and then look, so far I have eight, but I'm going to use the holes to make two more. So these are going to be smaller bagels. Let me show you guys what I'm going to do with the little baby one, okay? You can either just like tear it so for this last one you could just like poke a hole and tear it but I don't want to do that because that's ugly so I still punch it so then I get 10 and then this little one is what I tear and this is for Josh every time I make bagels Josh will get the little one <laughs> so let's boil 
and I just want them to boil for about a minute on each side and this is the easiest way I know how to flip them with a skimmer and another spoon and when I remove them with the skimmer I just leave it on the skimmer now I used to put it on a cooling rack but that's like a whole lot of extra cleanup so just leave it on the skimmer let it drain and then now let me put my egg wash and the egg wash makes it stiff on the top and also um, makes the stuff that you put on the top um, stay like the onion powder if it's parmesan cheese you know whatever you want to sprinkle on the top and I always put it on parchment paper that's lightly floured like this now let me boil another one so you gotta take the time to boil all of, all of them guys this is the baby one Joshua's eyeing this baby one right here and it works better if you could just like work with two things like this and um just go on ahead and put your little egg wash on the top and you know so as not to spoil uh, I mean waste this egg you want to go ahead and fry this when you're done so you can eat it in your bagel <laughs> let me get the baby one out and the oven is ready for me at 375 degrees Fahrenheit so I was preheating while I was boiling but the minute what I want to let you guys know the minute you start cutting this, you know, like make them look like bagel, you gotta have this water going because they, they rise pretty quickly. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, and the baby. So let's get them in the oven. At about 20 minutes in, you wanna go ahead and switch the trays around, okay? So put the top to the bottom and the bottom tray to the top. Set the timer for about 20 minutes and we'll check on it. Probably won't be done by then, but we'll check it out when we get the water. Clean up this mess. Pretty soon we're going to be eating bagel. 35 minutes later, here they are. And you notice I switched the trays. So that ensures that the tops of the bagels are all going to be brown because we switch them around. And also that the bottoms will be cooked and crispy. Take a look at my beautiful thumbnail right here, guys. Gorgeous. Mm, let's dive in. You guys saw that I used this, right? I used some parchment paper with a little bit of flour sprinkled on top. Don't use aluminum foil because the bagels get stuck to it some way, somehow, and it's kind of hard to peel off. Now, I've never tried using the baking sheet just plain like that with butter on it, but I suppose it's something we could try in the very near future. So my bagels are all ready, and this is the baby one for Josh. He likes to just grab this one and eat it right when it's done. And... They're stiff on the top because of the, um, the egg wash, but they're also just like soft right through. And you can pretty much like tear them like that. You know, some people like to tear them. And I prefer to cut them open and then toast them. And even though this is a savory bagel and it's, you know, has the onion and all that stuff in there, I tend to eat them with jelly. <laughs> I have really, really weird taste buds. So basically this is the base for making the bagel, the flour, the yeast, the sugar that I showed you. And then you go on ahead and put, well, of course you put salt. You go on ahead and put whatever you want to put in there. So you can put other things that you like, you know? So I've done it with jalapeno and Parmesan cheese. This one's now with the onions, the caramelized onions and the onion powder on top. And I've done the sweet ones where I use um, cinnamon and I put raisins or I've swapped out raisins for dates. So you, you, you can see what, you know, you can come up with your own ideas and run with it, right? So anyways, I'm going to taste this for you guys in a quick second. But I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching the show, for liking, for sharing the videos, for commenting, for subscribing, and for sponsoring. So take a look at my little sponsor board right here. Thank you guys so much for um, your liberality. Thank you for giving so freely to me and knowing that I just take the money and use it back on the show. And I'm so glad that you guys feel like I put out such good content that you want to give back to me and I truly appreciate it, okay? Um, now it's time to taste. Mm, 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 mm. Oops guys, I almost forgot. I want to give a shout out to Kayla Webb and Valerie Webb. Kayla, I met you at um, Arrowhead Regional Medical Center. Thank you so much for stopping by and saying hey to me. And um, say hello to your mom, Valerie, okay? I'll see you guys soon. Hey guys, if you like what you see here, you may like my vlog channel. Head on over to youtube.com forward slash talk to get caught up on what's going on behind the scenes of the cooking channel, what's coming up next, and what's going on in my daily life.